Hi, it's Julian Meller, Easy Swing Coach. How would you like to gain a few extra yards not having to do a great deal? Not do, not do a great deal different? Um, I think we can all hold our hands up and say, yeah, I wouldn't mind gaining a few extra yards. And I've been, I've been doing uh, the last two weeks, I've, I've done a couple of one day courses, a refresher course. And one thing that I'm seeing um, with some golfers is, is not actually releasing the golf club correctly, which is doing two things. It's slowing the golf club down and it's generally leaving the club face open. So quite a few shots uh, from people are just starting off to the right if you're right-handed and it hasn't got a tremendous amount of speed to the shot. So that's really coming down to not releasing the golf club correctly. So I don't talk about positions when I coach golfers uh, because I see it as a movement and not a series of positions pieced together. Um, but on this occasion, I am going to just demonstrate you a different position on the on more on the follow through than on the backswing, just for demonstration purposes. And in an ideal world, we want we want to swing it nice and efficiently. But here's the Here's what I'm going to talk about here. So as we take the club back, there's a natural angle between your lead arm and the golf club, ideally. So what we're not really looking for is everything to be on a straight line. Can you see how that all looks straight? So there's a natural separation. And where that comes from, if I was going to throw this club down the fairway, what would happen? My wrist would cock and my elbows would fold and I could actually throw that quite a long way down the fairway. If I wanted to put a bit of power into it, I could lean back and then really throw it forward. So this is actually quite a natural action. So what it wouldn't look like is this. So I could throw it forward, but it's not going to have any, any speed to it and it's almost inevitably going to go, uh, go wrong, to be honest. So we're after this natural cocking action of the wrists and of the elbow folding. So if we've got it here in the back swing, I'm going to stop about here. What do you think it should look like in the follow through? So what I see, this is the problem that I'm seeing with a lot of golfers. So on the way down, I'm now starting to see people holding it. Can you see how I'm, my hands are ahead of the golf club? So everybody's talking about shaft lean now, but through experience, what we're seeing here is a lot of shaft lean, but never releasing the club face. The club face is wide open. So my, this is an eight iron. It's probably now got a wedge loft on it as I strike it. And can you see how the club is on the same line as my arm, still on the same line, and then that false move right at the end where people think they've released the club properly. So how does this look? So it's, it's, it's the angle is set here, and it's repeated on the follow through. So I'll try and do that nice and slowly. Now, this is not flipping the wrists. If you stop the body, the hands will flip or the club face will flip, they'll overtake your hands and then the, the ball will go way left. So if the body stops, yes, I would agree that this is a flipping action, but we don't do that because we turn the body in the same time, but now we want that lovely wrist release. Really made much easier if the grip is relaxed. If this is locked up tight, there's that holding action. And it's, I'm going to try and hit two shots. I don't know if you'll hear this any different on the camera, but now I've gone tight here and I'm going to hold it in the follow through. It's kind of like a, a dull strike and then people will add that little bit on the, at the end, but that's far too late. So that ball went 30 yards offline and probably not much more than 80, 90 yards for, for an eight iron. Put quite a bit of force into it, but no speed whatsoever. So now I'm just going to release this. And I'm going to do, I promise you, I'm going to do a little tap. Um, again, I'm not sure if you'll hear it or not, but uh, let's give it a go. Now that one has gone 10 yards to the right of target and at least 30 yards further. 
Uh, and that's really happening because I've increased my club head speed, but I've also squared the club face up back at impact rather than holding it open where we get that club face pointing to the right and increasing the loft. So now I've come back to an eight iron loft when I've struck it and I really didn't put a lot of effort into that one or I didn't put a lot of speed into that last shot and it just flew off. And I'm into that nice release position rather than hold, 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 flick at the end. That's where we're just releasing the wrist, but it's all too late then. It's the ball's long gone by then. So let's just hit hit one more shot here. Just I'm just gonna release the club face. And through. Yeah, and that's gone. 130. With, with not a great deal of, of effort, to be honest. So what we're saying here is there's a natural um, throwing action here. Let's call it a casting action, if you want to call it that, if you like casting a fishing rod. But this natural wrist cock here, it uncocks to impact and it recocks here again. So what we're not doing is holding the golf club. Otherwise, you'll hit the ball off to the right and you'll lose direction and you'll lose power and distance. So. Um, have a go at this and if you can't if you can't get the feeling holding it normally just flip your club upside down hold the hold the head end and just one-handed and get this feeling of swooshing the golf club just to increase that club head speed rather than holding it as you see there on the camera so again i hope this video has helped and uh, and as always if you've got any messages just drop me a line you can reach me at juliemellergolfschool.com and I'll, uh, I'll happily answer any, any questions that you've got. Thanks for watching. Bye.